Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this green man, oak man, wood spirit, whatever you want to call him, onto this pine wood. As for me, always get me template on like so. Bit of blue painter's tape at the top there, literally just to hold it in place. And I like to put my carbon paper underneath and draw around it. Two or three pieces of carbon paper and then that's ready on the wood to route out. Now you can glue that straight to it if you wanted to. This originally is a scroll saw pattern so I've modif modified it in certain places just so it looks a bit better for the scroll saw. So we've gone round it, we've got our carbon underneath, we've transferred the image, we've got that nicely onto the like so. Always shading the areas that we're going to route out. It's quite complicated, is this? There's a lot going on. You can see from that. So shading the areas we want to remove. Because you'll go away, come back, and start removing this section. Whereas we want the dark section out. So what we'll do, we'll route out all the darkened areas. Then I'll cut a strip off either end. Because these longer leaves, I'm sorry for moving it about so much, like up here. I want them to bend over the end of the wood so that they're showing on the side. So it looks like the ivy, wood, whatever it is, branches are growing over and wrapping around the wood at the end. Also, you'll notice I've done five lines down here. Just about to see them. Like there. And we will route them out. Or even scroll saw the lines just so it looks like it's on five pieces of wood with a slight gap in between so there's a lot to go on and there's plenty to do and then once it's all done we'll put paint in a bit of stainer we'll make that up as we go along with a lot of projects you have a rough idea what you want to do and things can alter as you go along right that's that bit out of the way as always for me, I'm going to use these CNC bits for the routing out work. We will do all the line work with these. Once that's done, we'll come in with these mill end bits. These are perfect for getting inside that darkened area and removing all that section. Some of these bits are so small, like down here, I'll just basically just do that with the CNC bit. Most of this will be done with the CNC bit because I have a feeling... This is going to pop off really easy. They do come with a smaller shaft, a 3.175mm, same size as a Dremel, like so. You can see how pointed that is. So you will need a collet, and that's literally just a little tube like that with a couple of splits in, three splits. You place that inside, and obviously that has now thickened that shaft up to a quarter inch, and that will fit nicely into your router. And once that's, we've gone around all the line works and took out what we can with the CNC bit, we'll remove that, pop the mill end bit in, exactly the same procedure, pop that into your router and remove the bigger areas. Then once that is done on the face itself, I'm also going to remove all the background area, just drop that down a couple of mil, just so he's standing up slightly off the boarding, and then like I say, put the slits in. And we'll see how far we get with this project. Okay, that's enough talking now. Let's pop our little CNC in bit first. And we'll start drawing around these lines. Okay, you can see from that, we've gone round all our lines. 
the good thing about these projects even though it looks quite complicated and there's a lot going on I'd rather do these than do lettering because with these it doesn't really matter if things aren't perfect as with lettering you've got to get them nice and straight and fairly spot on right as you've already seen we've done on our inner lines we do have all this to go around here eventually i'm just going to leave that for now and focus on the green man himself so we've done our cnc bit we'll take that out for now we'll want it later when we do these lines here and i'm going to put on these millen bits they come in different sizes there is one smaller than that end one that snaps as soon as you use it so be prepared for that obviously get one that's going to fit into these tight little spacers and there's a couple on here that are really narrow the wrinkles under the eyes so we might have to go down one smaller for that but for now we've got lucky with this one so it's just a case of slot slotting it into the same same collet as before pop that in the router find an area that you've already cleared out and we'll set it to the same depth like that and literally start going over the shaded areas Right, we've gone all the way round. They're all cleared out nicely. Come out nice and clean. No problem with that one. Remember, we've got to go all the way around this outer edge eventually and remove all that background just so this stands up just three or four mils from the backing board. Just before that, just to make it easy for me, I'm going to cut out these lines just with a scroll saw you could use a normal hand saw band saws this is too wide for a band saw for mine anyway so i'll cut the lines down here just so it looks like they're separate boards it seems a bit strange even though these boards have all been already glued together i just want them to look like they're put down as separate and also on this side bits like we said before i will cut around that with a scroll saw and then we'll gently sand with sanding birds and round them off slightly just so it looks like the branches or the twigs are wrapping around the piece of wood. Scroll saw, just a standard blade, nothing too fantastic. So I'll cut this out now and then we'll go back to removing the backing piece again. Okay, as you can see from that, we've done our lines in with the scroll saw. We've roughed the edges up slightly. This will all look better once you sand all that down and just make it rough and ready. But you can see the board effect we're going for down here as well. These are all being cut out exactly the same. So, what we're doing now is get our CNC bit back on again and go around all the outer edges of the green man himself
Right, we've gone all the way around the edges with our CNC bit. You can see from that. Now remember, we've got to remove all this now. That's quite a bit. Normally, I would use my mill end bit. But on this occasion, I'm going to put on... It's a straight metric bit. It's a double bladed, so it's a blade at one side, blade at the other, and you also get a bit of a blade at the bottom. And hopefully that will fit in there and remove all the all this section and the same at the top. They do come in different sizes. There's an even bigger one there. Nice chunky blade. We might end up putting that one in yet. And there's an even bigger one still. That's a big boy, that one. Different sizes. Must be half inch that one. 516s and I think 532s if that means anything to you guys I'll just go on the sides of them so yeah we'll pop one of those on now Right, we've gone all the way round with our straight bits. That took all that backing off. That took some doing, but I think the effect was worth it. You can see good four or five mil that one, so it's quite deep is that one. Now we just go around with this sander. We use a little mouse sander, sander on the Dremel, anything we can grab older. And we'll start shaping this down a little bit, roughing up these backboards. We want it to look used. And on these bits, we'll curve them round, just so they do the sides. It looks like the green man himself is actually growing and grabbing the wood round the edges there. So I'll shape that off with a sanding burr on the Dremel. We'll do all that next. Right, you can see I've gone all the way around this. We've sanded it down. We've rounded our edges off. We've done our planks at the back. We've got the branches going over the edges there like so. You can see what we've got there. Now, you see that darker section? I'm going to try and stain this middle man. Originally, I was going to paint him. Browns, yellows, greens. But for now, I'm just going to try and put some stainer on. A stainer, just a wood dye, pine, antique pine, just on the man himself and the branches, so it's darker. And then we'll just put linseed oil on the back. Now, if it doesn't look right, we'll just paint over it and go back to the painting idea. But for now, just going to get some of this stainer, like so. Bit of paper. I just want to rub it in there, just to see. How is going to look? I'll come back when this has all been done. Right, you can see from that, I put my stainer on. Personally, I wish I just stained the raised areas of the rilted out bit. But I went ahead and covered it all in. There's just too much of this wood showing through the actual image itself. Now, I'm not 100% happy with it. It's showing you different options. So you could have just stained it. But I went for the full cover, and it's just maybe just a bit, just one big brown blob in the end. But it's still there. I mean, it's a, I suppose it's a personal thing. You can still see it's still carved out and it's routed out, but each to their own, I say. What I'm going to do now is linseed oil. You see, I've done a bit in this corner. Just boiled linseed oil, just to darken this back 
a little bit just to see if maybe it's not so much in your face. I can just find that corner there for you. We just want it to look like that. So we'll go ahead, cover all this up. Well, the backing bit, should I say, with the linseed oil. That's just a case of brushing it on. And then once it's dry, we'll have another look. And if I'm still not happy, my next stage is to use resin, multicolored resins, green, reds, oranges, and just cover, fill in all these sections that we've routed out. We don't do things easy over here, do we? But anyways, your boiled linseed, that's just a case of popping it on like so. We'll do all the sides with this, right up to the edges. Okay, you can see from that, I've done the linseed on the outer woods. Now I've got no problem with them whatsoever. But unfortunately, I'm not too happy with the man in the middle. It just looks like one big blob. I do wish I'd never put the stainer on the wood dye at all. So what I'm going to do is get all these bits here. I'm going to fill them with, with resin. Just to see if we can break it up a bit. Just so you can see the green man in the middle. So green resin, maybe a few different colours. And we'll hopefully see if we can salvage this one. Let's go on to the resin side. Right, let's try some resin in this and see if we can salvage something from it. The resin I'm going to use is Amazing Clearcast. I use this on all my projects. And you just measure it out by volume. There's no scales involved or anything like that. Literally just a case of getting two containers, A and B. I'll start off with an inch in one of A, an inch in B, and literally mix the two together. So there are your two containers, you've got your resin A and your adna B. So one goes in one, one in the other, mix the two together. They do say on the instructions use a third container, I've never bothered. I literally just pour B into A because that's the easiest flowing of the two. Now I've done one already, and there's our resin, so I've set a good mix in for three or four minutes. That's now ready for the pouring. Colour wise, there's plenty of different powders out there, inks, dyes. I just get these dyes, just cheap things off eBay. They work fantastic, I've never had any problems with them. We're going to start off with a couple of greens and just put them in alternate, just to give the effect that the green man's got some kind of colour to him and not just one big like this. This might be okay for somebody, you might prefer it like that. I'm just not too comfortable with it, so we're going to throw some resin in. And then we'll see how it's looking, and hopefully we might get some yellow at the backing of the eyes, just to make them pop a bit, and we'll take it from there. So we've mixed up our resin now, a little bit does go a long way, so don't get too crazy. You're better off mixing an inch or so at a time, then mixing a full cupful, and you're going to end up throwing it away, or it's starting to go off before you have a chance to use it. Okay, these colours are brilliant, no problem. You don't need a lot, three or four drops in each container of resin, should I say, in each mix. That'll be enough for there, hopefully. If it doesn't look dark enough, you can always add a bit more to darken it down. I'm going to pop a little bit more in there, and then we'll start putting it out. Right, that's all nicely mixed. I use these plastic party spoons. They're really cheap and you get plenty like that. And they're ideal because they do have a little lip on the end and that allows you to use it as a scoop to pour in. Some have been known to use syringes and squirt it all into there. I can't see me doing that. And then just get a little cocktail stick and we're just going to Push it along like so. Right, let's start. Just pick any random one and we'll start putting some of this resin in. So scoop it like so. And in it goes. Now it will flow to a fashion, but you will need to help it 
on its way. Now I don't want it to go flush, I want to have a little lip on it just so we can see that it has been routed out. So you've got your bit in, literally get your cocktail stick and feed it along like that. Once you've got it touching, it will flow a lot better like so. And that goes up into there, getting right into those corners. Need a bit more, we'll drop a bit more in. Nice and steady. Okay, we get the general idea. Like I say, it is a slow process. We'll come back, hopefully when this one's taking shape. Right, that's all our resin in for now. This was done over two days, to be honest, so there's no rush. Do a little bit, have a rest, come back another day. What you need to be doing, though, as you do each section with your resin, is literally go over with a lighter. And the idea is of the flame is just to disperse any small bubbles that are in the resin because of the mixing process. And you can go over five, ten minutes after you've done this, just to make sure you've got every little bubble in there right you can more or less just see from that what we've done we'll put this to one side now good 24 hours for me 12 24 hours something like that and then we'll see what it looks like right it's the next day everything set solid i didn't realize this is like a luminous in the eyes and mouth, I just thought it was a green. So it has got a little bit to it, but not nothing too much to frighten the kids away. So there we have it. I'm not going to put anything else on this. No varnish, no sprays. It's an indoor piece. There's enough shine in the resin to compensate. If I can just show you. Plenty of shines here, as you can see, to compensate for not putting any sealer or varnish on it. And that's it, this little project, I say little, is done. Just a couple of quick notes, I had no intention of putting resin in this, but I messed up with the stainer, just too much was that. So remember as you're going along, if something don't quite work out right, always have another option, and it's turned out near enough for me in the end. So there we have it. The actual green man himself is 18 inch by 21 and the overall piece is 18 inch by 27 inches on pine routed out green man with resin inlay. We made it in the end. Thank you very much for watching.